Hi all, Lindsay at Close Call Sports. Looks like our Padres Giants ejection of Antoine Richardson has turned into quite the intersectional quandary. First of all, to review, here is the ejection. To Duggar, and Duggar hits one on the ground, and a base hit to left field. Runner goes, Bart takes it, and there's no throw. You got to steal a base when a team is up like that. This coverage, Johnny. T-Mobile's coverage is so good it covers up the entire argument between third base coach for Padres Schilt and Giants first base coach Antoine Richardson pertaining to sportsmanship stealing second base in a blowout game. The third base umpire Greg Gibson he made the ejection motion. Well, the first base coach was who was ejected and Alyssa Nacken is out there taking over. Caught up on that? Okay, after the game, this is what Richardson said. A third base coach from the San Diego Padres was looking into our dugout and I say, I say um, can I help you? You're looking for somebody. Um, and he says to me, I didn't say anything to you. And I said, I know. I want to know if I could help you looking for somebody. And at this, at this time, he's walking toward our dugout. Um, and, and then he says, hey, I, I was looking for Alex Wood. And so at that point, Cap came over to kind of like defuse the situation. Um, at that point in time, I turned, I turned to Woody and I was like, hey, Woody, uh, Shilty's looking for you. Um, at that point in time, uh, Shilty started to walk back toward third base. And at that point in time, he, he uh, yelled, uh, you need to control that motherfucker. Um, and at that point in time, I went up to the front top step and I said, excuse me, because um, I didn't think that that was, um, I, I couldn't believe what I heard. Um, and at that, at that point in time, Gibson, uh, the, the crew chief, decided to toss me from the game. Um, and I say this because I think that this, um, his, his words were disproportionately unwarranted um, and reeked undertones of racism. Um, when he referred to me as that motherfucker, as if um, I, um, to be controlled or um, a piece of property or, or enslaved. Um, and I think it's just really important that we understand what happened tonight. And the second part that's equally disappointed is that me being tossed empowers by the Ad Empire, empowered this coach to continue to have conversations like that with people like me. Uh, and that's really unfortunate that that's what happened tonight. That led to this happening the next day. Yeah, so, um, you know, Shilty and I had an opportunity to, to talk this morning and um, kind of revisit some of the instances from last night. Um, and, you know, I just kind of like, you know, after we, we kind of discussed this, make it very clear that um, in, no, in no way that I believe that Shilty is a racist. Um, what um, I was trying to do is just bring awareness to how words impact impact certain communities, um, even though that they might not have ill intent. Um, and it's just that helping us to be more aware of, of what those things mean um, when we do share them. And I think, um, you know, Shilti, Shilti has some, some words to speak on, on that. Well, I'm grateful for Antoine clearing that up. Um, you know, it was clearly misinterpreted. Um, and I think he knows this and, you know, my value as a human is uh, to love people and that's exactly what I represent. Everyone all caught up? Good. What this video will do is either get rid of half of my subscribers, which is totally okay, or it will open some minds or some people will just clip skip. The thing is, unless you know, you don't know. Empathetic experience of marginalization surprise requires a life with adverse circumstances. What I mean by that is when Schultz says control, he's talking about the manager is the supervisor of the coach. So control your coach, control your players. But there's no context where control has this tenuous relationship with slavery that there is for Richardson because it is a tenuous generational trauma that you don't have a frame of reference if you don't have a frame of reference. If you don't know, you don't know. So that's why those words mean nothing to Schild. It's innocuous. But to Richardson, it's anything but. Let me think of another example. You remember that famous Bull Durham scene that I just showed there? It's a homophobic slur. That's why you can't hear most of it. But it doesn't mean much to you. It's not offensive in any way unless you have a lifetime of living that experience or the empathetic experience of constantly being put down for a characteristic used as an insult, as the basis for discrimination. Those are immutable characteristics that just because you are who you are, you get treated poorly. And then that's an insult to say, yeah, that's how bad you are. 
that truly affects marginalized people's lives in a negative way that it does not do to people who are not marginalized in that way. We also included in the video last night of the ejection, Alyssa Nacken's first time coaching on the field in a major league game. First time for any woman anywhere. And the comments <laughs> did disappoint. Who cares? Why is a woman on the field? She's not qualified. She's never played for an MLB team before. Diversity higher. I wonder what the comment section would look like back in Jackie Robinson's day. Or if this happened for, we're on par site, Emmett Ashford, hockey, Willie O'Ree. If you don't know who they are, look them up. You might learn something. There's a lot of this. For the Richardson piece, there was racist comments. For her, the sexism. You know, I'm surprised. I'm trans, and I haven't gotten that much hate, so bring it on. I, I, I'm always amazed with some of the vitriolic stuff that we get. You know that a trans woman's running the channel, right? Like, be honest, did you go first to my Adam's apple, beard shadow, brow ridge, receding hairline? I need to know what to tell my facial feminization surgeon in a few years. This is why representation matters. Inclusivity is important. Why having a diversity of opinion and voices at the table is super helpful. Because when a person who isn't marginalized in that way, like Schilt, says that and sees nothing wrong with it, because to him, there is nothing wrong with it. But to someone who is a marginalized person, those words are charged. And Schilt cannot hope to understand that unless he listens to someone who does. And that's why you have to have diversity of opinion at the table, diversity and inclusion as it were. Just to illustrate the power of words, y'all are familiar with the phrase, as an insult, throws like a girl, right? We know that's a sexist insult. We can figure that one out, right? How about grow a thicker skin? You know where that comes from? Now, the underlying message of emotional resilience, that's great. Sensitivity is good, but not too much. These things are healthy attitudes. But do you know what the, like, the literal meaning of grow a thicker skin is? You know what hormone makes you grow thicker skin? Testosterone. Estradiol makes you grow thinner skin, by the way, super smooth. So what ends up happening with that grow a pair, man up, is that we get these messages that men are better than women. There are similar phrases for the races. There are similar phrases for religions. And you can go down all the different characteristics and find a preferred and a dispreferred one. And that is how words matter. Visit us online at CloseCallSports.com, Twitter and Facebook at CloseCallSports. We'll see you on the site.